Every year, fisheries biologists on Lake Sakakawea age walleyes, sauger, salmon, and smelt. We're visiting with fisheries supervisor Russ Kinsler to find out why this process is important. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Russ, how do you go about aging these fish on Lake Sakakawea? Every year in July, when we do our annual test netting, we pull some otoliths out of a lot of the walleye we catch. Um, they're already dead, so in order to gain more information from, information from them, we, we pull the otoliths, which is basically the inner ear bone, small little bone. We take that out and then we'll just put it in the vial with the lengths of the fish and then in the winter, now we come in and I'll take that otolith and if you crack it in half, it's got rings on it that look similar to a tree. They're hard to see when you just crack it in half, so if you put it over a candle and burn it, it makes the rings separate and jump out. So you can put it under a microscope and then you can count those rings, or the annuli, basically how old the fish is, and get an age from that fish. Um, so it's as simple as that. How many fish do we do, walleyes do we do on an annual basis? On average, it's about 1,500 fish a year uh, that we age. Um, which on Lake Sakakawea, when you think 1,500 fish, that's it's really a pretty small drop in the bucket. And I mean, there are lots of walleyes in Sakakawea and taking 1,500 out doesn't hurt the population. Is this process important to managing the fishery? Yes, by, by getting the uh, ages of the fish, we can look at and say, are we missing a year class? Did, did we not have natural reproduction? Did, did our stocking work? Uh, did it not work? Do we have all the year classes there? Or, and, and then also how strong they are. Um, when I age the fish, I can then take our sample and extrapolate that to all the fish that we caught. And it'll basically give me an idea of how strong the year classes are. We can also then use that to determine mortality. How fast are the fish dying? So that helps us with along with our creel survey, looking at natural mortality, you know, the ones that are dying naturally, versus angling mortality, how many are being harvested by anglers. And we can make sure that our regulations are providing a sustainable fishery so that we're not hurting the fishery going into the future. It also tells us how fast the fish are growing. We can look at that. So we can see, are our fish healthy? You know, um, do we have, uh, enough prey out there to support the fishery and maintain it long term. Russ, what's the oldest fish that you've ever aged on Lake Sakakawea? Uh, the oldest walleye ever aged was back in 2017 or 2018. It was a 27 year old walleye. We routinely uh, age fish that are 20 plus years old, um, usually the low 20s. The 27 was kind of an exception, but it shows us that fish, even 20 is a, is a long lived fish, you know, for a walleye in Lake Sakakawea. Fish tend to live longer in colder bodies of water. Um, Lake Sakakawea has lots of deep, cold water, so our fish tend to grow a little bit slower than, say, a fish in a small lake out in the prairie. You know, those fish are growing, it's a more, the smaller lakes are more productive, they're growing faster, and thus they don't live as long. Um, they basically burn out. Um, whereas in Sakakawea, we have that colder water, so the fish have the opportunity to live a long time. You really can't tell the age of the fish by the size of the fish. No, you can't. Um, when fish are smaller, say five, six inches, yeah, you, they're probably a year old. Um, they get up to that 14 inches, uh, they could be two years old, three, four. On slow you know, years where they're not growing very, very well, they could even be five. So as that fish grows and you know, even gets up to 20 inches, now you're talking a fast growing fish can reach 20 inches in five years. Uh, slow growing ones could be 20 years old um, and, and a lot of times them older slower fit growing fish tend to be males you know there's when you talk about reproduction of a fish the uh, males can fertilize a lot of eggs and be small where a female the bigger you are the more eggs you have you know so there's an advantage to grow and get bigger as a female whereas a male there's really not that advantage to grow and get super big you know so a lot of our older fish tend to be slower growing males how about salmon and smelt um yeah we also uh age smelt which on lake sakakawea you get up to a four-year-old smelt that's an ancient smelt um they they tend to die i mean they their, their life cycle is very short um, 
the bulk of our smelt are one, two, and three year olds. And that once, like I said, once they hit four, they tend to be dying off. Now we have aged a, fish, a smelt out to age nine. So they can live fairly long too, but it's, it's pretty rare um, to see them much over four. Um, salmon, we have just started uh, using odorless to aged salmon. Um, historically, we've used coated wire tags. So we have, we know how old they are because when we tag them, we have started to use odorless is to try and find an easier way of doing that, a little cheaper way. Um, and the, the tags are helping us to learn how to do that because we have known aged fish, so we can look at the odorless, age it, and then say, did we get it right? You know. So we have just begun using odorless to age salmon, and our salmon are, are short-lived fish too. You know, the males are one, two, three years old, females two, three, four years old, so they don't live real long, so it, it makes the aging a little easier. How do anglers benefit from you guys aging these fish? By us aging the fish, we're able to monitor the population better to see, you know, is their growth good? Um, do we have all the age classes out there? So it just helps us in determining whether it's a stock or not stock, you know, how many to stock. It, it just helps us to maintain, to make sure we're maintaining a sustainable fishery long-term. A lot of great information, Russ, thank you. Thank you.